were supposed to have coffee about a year ago. Yeah. And literally, we were doing phone tag, phone tag, and then you were oh. going off to do Westworld, the new season. Yeah. And I was going off to Atlanta, so we sort of missed, and then all of a sudden, here we are. Yeah. So we probably share a very unusual sort of set of circumstances for this industry. Yeah. Which is, we're both women, we're both Asian. Yeah. And at the same time, we're doing things that are not stereotypical for either of those things. Yeah. Like, there's nothing less girly than something like Westworld. <laughs> you know, it's not a thing that you would expect. Part of the great joy for me in working in this industry has been, you know, I am, you know, a woman and Asian American, but I get to just tell stories that I want to tell, regardless of, you know, who I am, which is the same privilege afforded other people in this industry and it and it's a hard one privilege i think and i'm, mm. I'm sure sure you agree but you know i think fundamentally as a storyteller you just want to be able to inhabit the world you want to inhabit mine happened to be one with robots and it's cool <laughs> you know, and, and lots of violence awesome panda lots of <laughs> <laughs> like it's violence but it's adorable violence yeah. it's fuzzy animals you know yeah. what can you yeah. do you yeah. do things with fuzzy animals that if you tried that with a person you probably would kill the person yes. as a live action film <laughs> it would be really violent <laughs> completely rated yeah. r yeah, you know exactly. um, i think it's really an interesting time right now because people are actually more open to to things that maybe was not as common when we were priced starting out. I just directed for the first time recently, and you know, I made this joke to my DP. There was a goat in the background. I was like, what if we just did a slow push it on the goat this whole time for the entire scene, which I would never do. And I laughed and I was like, well, no woman would ever direct again. <laughs> but there, there is like a kind of pressure sometimes of you're not just representing yourself, but you know that everybody's trying to make these inroads right now. And collectively, you're not just trying to do a good job for you and your vision, but you also just don't want to let everyone down. You want to say, right. look, I can take this franchise. I can take this and I can knock it out of the park. Which is why I love working with women because nobody works harder. Nobody has earned what they're doing more than uh, the women that I've worked with. Because I know it's a rare opportunity, very, yeah. very rare, very unexpected in many ways. Yeah. I've had a lot of times where young women filmmaking students would come up to me and they would talk about how they love doing the craft, yeah. but they're scared of actually being able to make it. I think it's hard for everyone, anyone yeah. to make it but they have that extra layer of fear that yeah. they're not gonna be able to make it through. It's something that is a little, little frightening to see in someone that should be young and fearless. I think it also comes from having someone to imprint on or having a role model. I mean, I remember the reason why I kind of loved interacting this year is because I was working with Michelle McLaren on our show and super cool yeah she's awesome and she was just like you should totally do this like you're kind of micromanaging behind the scenes anyway <laughs> so you might as well just go direct and and you know coming from a, a director that I like so much and, and and who's so effective at her job to hear that and to just hear don't don't be a coward don't like sit there equivocating mm -hmm. you know just go do the work it was the kind of kick in the pants I needed. And I'm sure, you know, your work has inspired so many people to say, why not me, you know? Yeah, why why can't it be me? I mean, I can speak for myself. When I walk around, people don't go, oh my gosh, that is such an unusual human being to have <laughs> right, done that. Exactly. It's more like, well, there's nothing special about that. <laughs> what, right. Why, if yes. she could do it, I could do it, yes, you know? Exactly. It's not like she's got God rays coming out that she actually <laughs> managed this opportunity. Yeah. No, it's because the more accessible and the more like them you are, yeah. the more encouraging that you can be for other people. And we had this whole, you know, in different ways, but you're first generation American and, yeah. and I am too. And, but you were born in South I was Korea. born in South Korea. I came mm -hmm. here when I was four and a half. When did you start speaking? I English? started speaking when I was about four and yeah. three quarters. When you're that young, you pick it up like in a Quickly, couple of months. Yeah. And yeah. So I was playing with the little neighbor boy and we were just chatting like kids do. And the next thing you know, I was speaking English more than Korean in the house. I spoke Chinese when I was a kid first with my mom. But yeah, after a while, when you live in a place, the, the, that language becomes your dominant language. There's a whole other set of cultural, you know, implications to not being from this country necessarily, not looking like the typical person who does this industry. I mean, for me, the thought of working in Hollywood was something I didn't even contemplate until I was actually 30. I, I did all the things first. I did like law school. I did all the like responsible. Everything normal first. Exactly. Yeah. So that it was like, well, if it fails horrifically, I can still kind of support myself and take care of the people that I need to take care of. But 
there was never a moment for me where I took for granted like this is my this is my destiny. But I don't know what, what was it like for oh, you. Oh, it was completely not like that. <laughs> I mean, for me, it was the same way. I, I was thinking, okay, I got to do well in school. I've got to get straight A's. I get scholarships. I go to college right, and right. do all the things that, you know, were the responsible things to do. Especially if you have Asian yeah. family. Yeah. It's almost like you, you kind of have all this extra weight of, yeah. of concern. Yeah. There's a very a lot of worry going on. So I think it helped me because I had two sisters older than me that were already in the business. No, so they weren't dying. Yeah. They weren't starving. <laughs> they so were it was so OK. But before they got work, I was thinking, should I be a biologist or an engineer or something yeah. just in case they don't make it? But yeah. you, know, you just can't stop what you actually do. Yeah. You can't stuff that down unless you end up getting really depressed in life, I think. And not just for Asian Americans or first generation. Or there are economic considerations and yeah. hardships to trying to launch a career in Hollywood when you don't have any connections there. And the foremost is like, how am I going to pay my rent? Yeah. How am I going to pay off my school debt? You know, how am I going to take care of family obligations? Ultimately becomes like a gift because every day, no matter how hard it is on set or how difficult the writing is or you know, when something doesn't go right, you still kind of sit there like, I wasn't supposed to be here. You're still living you know? the dream. Yeah, like, like, this is like, crazy. This is still crazy cool. <laughs> Absolutely. It's like, what is the alternative? You could be a lawyer. Yeah. You could be probably, I'm sure, a great lawyer, yeah. but it wouldn't okay. be as fun. It wouldn't be as fun. and You wouldn't I mean, have robots so, yeah. as a lawyer. I know, I know. I mean, there's robot law now, I hear, but that's just strange and futuristic. And I don't know who the client is in that. You know, I don't know how you're monetizing that. <laughs> Maybe Google pays big bucks for that. <laughs> if you hadn't done what you do, what do you think you would have done? I honestly don't know because the reason why I'm doing what I'm doing is because I was always doing that and didn't know what it was. Yeah. Because I was doing storyboards when I was a little kid and I had movies in my head when I was a little kid and I would draw little action scenes and choreograph it out and figure out what the camera's doing. And then yeah. later on I found out that it was storyboarding Right. Because storyboarding is basically an artist's way of exporting an image out of their head if they don't have access to a camera or right. a crew or anything like right. that. So if I wasn't doing this for a living, I'd probably still do it as a hobby because yeah. I, I keep thinking that stuff up. But, you know, I, I think about that because my family came here in order to give me and my sisters an opportunity. Mm. In Korea at the time, there was no option to do any of that. You'd probably, you know, work in an office or you get married and have kids and that was about it. Yeah. It's now very different in Korea, which is great. Right. There's a lot of opportunity, but it certainly wasn't like that when I was a kid. So I think the other alternative was I probably would have just, you know, been an engineer or a doctor <laughs> or something where perfectly fine, but I probably would have been the most depressed engineer or doctor. Yeah. You know, I'd walk in, the patient would be like, man, that doctor was pissed <laughs> off. Is the diagnosis that bad? And it's like, oh, no, I'm fine. just not making a movie. <laughs> but you're going to live. <laughs> but it's true. The alternative makes every day a, a wonderful experience, even yeah. if it's horrible. Yeah, <laughs> it's true. <laughs> like, I can't believe I get to mess up in this venue with these people doing this art and telling this story. And that's a gift, I think, you know, to be able to feel anew every day how fortunate we are. I don't know about you, but on your sets, when you feel that way, I feel like other people feed off Everybody that energy. Feeds and it's like, us. come on, look at how lovely this is, that we're all together trying to create this story. I mean, yeah. What's more luxurious than that? You just feel everyone's energy around you and yeah. everyone's all, they get the little chilies, you yeah. know? They yeah. get the chilies. Yeah. And I was like, wow, that just exists all of a sudden. <laughs> yeah. It didn't exist a second yeah. ago. I was talking to um, some of our camera guys on, on our crew and I was like, you know, I feel like this is what it would have been like in high school if I had been any good at sports <laughs> and you had a team and you were all like cheering for the same thing and having Gatorade together or whatever, going to an after party. I'm like, is, is that what it would be like if I'd been athletic in high school? Because it feels really like you have this community and you're all putting your collective efforts towards the same vision. How strange that we get to do a team sport as a, as a vocation, I right? I know, <laughs> especially when I was in school, I was terrible at team sports and sports in general, horrible. Maybe that's the key. I was the last person picked for Me basketball. Me too. We the could last. have been the worst together. <laughs> yeah, we'd both be like yeah. sitting there. No, I dreaded it. Every day when they like pick the teams and you go and like, and the crowd of people unpicked gets smaller and smaller. Oh, and and you're the like, oh, I'm here I go. Whatever team needs this asthmatic, <laughs> I'll go there. One thing I was meaning to ask you, actually, how old is your daughter? She's four. 
four. So knowing what you do now, and I'm sure she's going to grow up with all this amazing role model <laughs> and you, what would you wish for her in this industry going forward? To feel the courage of your convictions and the story that you want to tell. And for me, you know, meeting people like you, meeting other collaborators that I've had who have inspired me and buoyed me, especially women for me, I have to say. It sets the bar at a different place. You feel like you have a community that you can be safe with, that you can be yourself with. It's like there's a language that nobody else hears that you guys can hear together. And the same thing happens with, you know, going out in that crowd today and seeing so many, you know, Asian American faces. I've never been to one of these, so I've never... It's cool. It's amazing. And it, everybody's so happy yeah. to see other people yes. that are just like yeah. them. Everybody's like, yeah. wow, we're all celebrating together. Exactly. It's like you've all been dancing to the same, like, soft tune for many years. Thought and you were alone. Like yeah, you were it's alone. true. And, and I didn't even realize <laughs> I, I kind of missed it until I saw it. And I thought, oh my goodness, how, how lovely to be with so many people who share this one aspect of my life, which I've, I've you know, I've never really shared with anyone in this in this town before so that's really cool <laughs> but we're gonna actually have to have coffee actually i know coffee exactly without cameras but actually <laughs> have coffee <laughs> Thank you. That's a